I think for me it's putting the client, the constituent, the stakeholder, the citizen at the heart of what you do, whatever you do. Uh, I've led a life in which as a barrister I had to make sure that the client felt that I was there for them. Similarly, as a member of parliament, it's about your constituents, it's about your citizens. Uh, as a diplomat, it's about making sure that as you operate on that stage, centre stage is always the person and the people who sent you there. But then too, if you are to work effectively in a country as a diplomat, you need to recognise that the people to whom you have been sent need to be there at the heart of what you do. So it's putting folk at the heart of all your activity and then building your activity around them. If you do that, if you put people first, you're going to get it right. I'm not sure I've ever at any stage in my life mapped out what I'm to do as a career. I didn't say, for instance, well, by the time you are 30, you should be an established lawyer and a member of a, a local authority of the Greater London Council. I didn't say by the time you're 35, uh, you should be a, a, a member of parliament. By the time you're 45, you should be a, a minister. By the time you're 50, you should be in cabinet. Uh, by the time you're 55, you should be uh, a, a, a high commissioner. That's not for me how it's, how it's worked out. What I've sought to do at every stage is to open my life up to the possibilities and to create opportunities around those possibilities and to rule nothing out. You see, all too often uh, we trap ourselves by our own sense of what is possible. The great thing I owe my, my parents, my mum and my dad, and also th the world into which I was brought up in the 19, late 1950s and 60s in Ghana, this is the first black independent country, everything seemed possible. My parents, uh, you, you know, always brought me up never to believe that there was anything that I couldn't be or, or do. That's the greatest gift I think you can give to, to a child. And if you've not been given it, well then you, you need to develop it. Don't accept uh, ever the little boxes people put you into. And don't jump in a little box yourself. All of us in life uh, have obstacles. <laughs> if, you are, if you are black, you've got the obstacle of racism, first and foremost. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. The R word is an ever-present reality uh, in the lives of every black man and woman or person uh, of, of color. But the important thing is never, ever to allow other people to define you. Don't allow uh, yourself to be what was that wonderful uh, f phrase that uh, I think Lamming had from, from Barbados, to be trapped in the castle of your skin. You know, I am proud of my ethnicity. I am proud of my diverse cultural background. I, I decline to be defined by it. I am what I am. I am the man I am and the man that I was made by birth and circumstance. Uh, but I will not allow myself to be stereotyped, to be brought on and off uh, a stage as a sort of silhouette, a black one-dimensional cardboard cutout. No, 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 no. So racism, yes, has to be uh, overcome, uh, but overcome in a way that does not allow color ever to, to define you. It's a part of what you are. It isn't what you are. You see, for me, the question of what's the business case for diversity is one that invites the answer, wake up, look around you, look at our world. If you believe that you can do business in a world in which 
your business is ethnocentric, in which your business doesn't reflect the reality of globalization, go ahead, you will fail. The best businesses are businesses that embrace globalization and diversity as an opportunity, that recognize that if you want to do business uh, outside a monocultural world, and to do business in the 21st century, that's what you've got to do, then you need to get real on diversity. You need also to recognize that we live in a world that's in the grip of a skill shortage. <laughs> there just aren't the people there with the capacities and skills that are required. So you can't turn your backs on someone because they're gay, because they're black, because they are, are a woman, because they are living with, with disability. You want to harvest and to harness the richness of the talent base that is around you, and you want to equip your organization, your institution, to operate in a global economy, in a global marketplace. So for me, the business case for diversity is self-evident, and it's fun, and it's richer, and will make you a better and happier person, and your institution a better and happier place to work in and to do business with.